Good morning. How are you? Good. Of course, I say it's good morning, but it's actually good evening for, for you, isn't it? All right. Um, we'll review move number nine, Wade Forward, uh, but we're going to go on to move number 10. I want to get you done with this form by the new year. And then, guess what? We're going to start, start again. Exactly. All right. But I want to get it through this um, uh, this this year, this term. So let's uh, go ahead and do the form as we know it up through move number nine, eight, nine, and whatever. Nine. 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 And, um, and then we'll go on to the new move. Let me adjust the camera here just a second. Your turn.
Good. Watch. Okay, let's go on to the next move. Sure. <laughs> okay, let's let's break this down. You know, as with it doesn't always happen this way, but many many times in the forms, we're doing what are called wrist locks. They're Chinese. They're called chinna. They're called joint locks. So they're called wrist locks, and usually not all the time, but usually we do them twice once forward and once reverse. Forward means your, uh, this, this hand is the lever, this hand is the fulcrum. It means the fulcrum hand is facing forward toward your opponent. All right, so it's like this. This is his elbow, this is his wrist. Boom. All right, and then reverse. Reverse means you're reversing the fulcrum, right? And now you're using the back of your hand. Why would you do that? Well, you don't have, um, there's, uh, there's a saying in, in Tai Chi and Chinese, da gi da shi, which means you only do something when your opponent gives you the opportunity, da gi, and you're in the right position, da shi. So if I happen to be in this position, then I can do this, right? I'm not going to have time to do anything else because, you know, there's, there's action going on the whole time. If I happen to be in this position, I don't have time to go, could you wait just a moment while I adjust my hand, right? <laughs> You're just going to have to use the, the back. So it just depends on your position. Um, Joint locks are something that happen in a sense, they happen by accident. You don't think to yourself, oh, I'm going to go out for this match and I'm going to do this joint lock on this guy. You can't do that because um, he, your opponent, needs to be in precisely the right position and you need to be in the right position. And that can only happen by accident. You can't, do you mind uh, turning your hand and doing this and, and getting the right position? No, it just happens by accident. Mm -hmm. But you train yourself to take advantage of the accidents, right? So that's the first thing that we're going to do is first a forward chin up and then a reverse chin up, right? So we've stopped at, at this uh, motion here, all right? Forward chin up, reverse chin up, forward chin up, reverse chin up. Now, the whole point of doing this is to practice 
with your dumb chin. Watch the white dot. This is what does it. The, the arms just carry the energy to the other guy. They add a little on top. But not much. Most of it is from this. The left qua. Watch. This is what you're practicing. The hands are very secondary. Forward chin up. Reverse chin up. All right. Now, you can do that very gently on the outside. So you don't have to do this. All right. All right. No, you don't have to do that. Because right. what you're practicing is um, activating the right muscles and the right bones and everything uh, in the correct sequence. That's the actual practice. All right. The, the outer flash, uh, that's not very important. So you can do it very, very gently. Right. Watch my elbows. They're very relaxed. <laughs> Watch, I'm going to do it wrong. You see how my elbows are kind of, there's a little stiffness in them. Like me. Every, everybody, everybody does that at the beginning. Everybody does it, right? Just, just relax. Here's the thing. Um... You have to be able to move your chi anywhere you want it to be. And the parts of your body which move are your joints. So your forearm doesn't move. Well, it does a little bit, but right? Because it, it, it twists. But, but basically, it's your wrist that moves and your elbow that moves. It's not in between. So the joints allow you to move, but they can also stop your chi. Mm -hmm. How do they stop your chi? When the joint becomes stiff, it's like somebody puts a dam in there. So if I have some, if I have some stiffness in my wrist, it means there's like a dam there, and the chi cannot go down or go down very well to my hand and the end of my fingers, which is actually the contact point with your opponent. All right? So if I'm kind of stiff like this, that means my chi, that means my chi is not flowing. Right? Now, when you're a beginner, everybody does the same thing at the beginning. Because you're, you're trying to learn the basic choreography, and you learn that from the outside. And only gradually over time does it become something that becomes internalized. Um, and so there's a, 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 it's not just a temptation. Honest to God, I mean this. Everybody does it.
you're, you're just kind of stiff and you're, you know, but the thing is, relax, relax, just shake it up, all right? Now, relax, relax doesn't, doesn't mean you're all wobbly like that. Relax just means you're not stiff in the joints. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, do you ever get, do you ever get on YouTube and watch YouTube videos? Yes, sometimes. Yours, I watch yours. <laughs> Uh, look up, look up Black Panther. Okay. Black Panther, and watch the way a Black Panther moves. That's I love this animal. So. Right. There's, there's no, there's no stiffness, but boy, boy, is there power. Power. That's the same thing. The power depends on having relaxed joints. Right. So the same thing here. Right. Just relax your elbows. Yeah, very simple. I was doing a little research this morning, actually for the advanced class. We're, we're doing an 83 movement form. What you're learning is a 24 movement form. It's a little baby form. The 83 movement form is one half of the, the real practice forms. The other one is, is a 76, all right? So um, I have not taught that that often because most people never get, to, they never get past the 24, all right? So um, I'm learning to teach it. Teaching the forms is very difficult because you have to try to be clear and you have to, you have to create levels. Because mm -hmm. right? you can't expect someone to go from zero to 100 miles an hour in one second. You go to 10 miles an hour, and then you go to 20, and then you go to 30. It's just gradually built. But when, you, when, as a teacher, when you're trying to teach someone, you use a different memory system than you do when you're learning the form, mm -hmm. yourself, when you're performing the form. So I can do the form, right? I can do the form just fine, but now ask me to explain it. It's kind of like, you, you drive a car, yes? Yeah. Okay, you drive a car. Uh, so you're in, what's the name of your little town? The town you live in? La Rochelle. La Rochelle. La Rochelle. So suppose someone, a friend comes to visit you and they're, they drive to La Rochelle and then they say, oh, I want to go to this place. Tell me how to get there. Yeah. I'm really bad at that. You can just drive there. But if you have to tell somebody how to get there, it's two different things. Absolutely. That's, that's what I mean. So knowing the form is one thing, teaching it is something completely different. Knowing how to get down to the harbor is one thing. Telling someone how to get down there is maybe something completely different. Yeah. So you have to you have to actually learn how to how to teach these things. Um, and that causes a, you have to have a lot of experience in doing that in order to teach the form well. Right. I'm not quite sure why I'm telling you this, but right. It's it's the same thing with this. Right. Relax. Relax. Right. Chin up. Chin up. Chin up.
maybe someday, maybe someday we'll come to France and we'll we'll do a uh, we'll do a workshop in France, right? I hope so. So we can so I can show you this. When somebody does a joint lot to you, then you will understand it. Uh, I have to do them very gently because otherwise you'll get hurt. But a joint, someone who knows how to do it, doing a joint lock on you, it's kind of unbelievable because they, it's not that they just muscle you. It's not just muscle. You can't, yeah, I can't show it on this because there's no joint, right? But what they do is they lock, they lock the wrist joint against the upper arm. Then they lock the elbow against the upper arm. Then they lock the shoulder against the body. Then they lock the body against the Don Chan. One, two, three, four. And you can't move. But anyway, right? forward chin up, reverse chin up. And what you're really practicing is this, squeezing, right? squeezing, squeezing. And the Don Chin is rotating, so as part of that squeeze, right, it rotates and boom, then it comes down. So the hands can be very soft. Forward chin up. Reverse chin up. 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 Yeah. So that's that's the first part of this move. The second part is a throw. So you're throwing a, a body over your leg. And generally, generally, the way that you do that is to, it, this is kind of a wrestling move. So you've got your leg out in front. So basically you can throw someone over your leg. The question is, how do you do that? Well, a, a simple way to do it. So here's, here's the other guy, right? A simple way to do that is, is to come up high, right? and throw him like that. So, you know, if, if I try to throw him down low, he it's too close to where he's grounded. And so he's gonna be able to resist it. Mm -hmm. but, if I, but if I do it up high, he, he doesn't have, it's too far from his grounding. So it's easy to throw him, easier to throw him. And how you do it is with your body. So watch. Right. Forward chin up. Reverse chin up. Set. Right. I'm right up. I've got my elbow right up next to his neck. Right. And now watch. Watch this. So the Don Chen is going like this. The Don Chen is doing this. What's the other, what's the other side, the other hand doing? Well, it could be doing a lot of things, but one thing it could be doing is taking hold of his hand. Right? So I'm up behind, I'm up behind his neck, and I'm gonna push him down here while I'm lifting his arm. 
if I lift his arm, it's going to make him start doing what I want him to do. So I start him moving this way, and then I finish it this way. So what that looks like in the form, forward chin up, reverse chin up, set, throw. One, two, 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 one, two. Right? So that's the second part. The third part is um, a slap upside the guy's head. You know, in, in Tai Chi, when you're doing the form, you're not fighting one guy. You're fighting a whole bunch of guys. You've seen, you've seen Kung Fu movies, right? They're always, they're always fighting a, a bunch of guys, right? O only one at a time, though. Right. So I, I throw this guy, and now another guy's coming. All right? Pop. All right? Pop. This is, this is a roundhouse punch. But it's a punch, not, not with these knuckles here. It's a punch with these two knuckles. Right? And it's right into the forehead. Boom. Pow. Right? Throw. Punch. Now, it might be that he's very well trained. So he's so well trained, he catches your punch. Right? He doesn't just block it, he actually catches it. So the punch is coming in and he catches it. What do you what do you do then? Right? <laughs> it's called clearing the hand. So let, let me do this from the side, this direction. Maybe you can see a little bit what's, what's going on. Throw. Punch. Now, I, I'm, I'm old, so I just, I just do it gently. But right? what you're really doing is this. Right? At the same time. You... You're pulling this in, not using your arm, not using your elbow. You pull it in using this. Watch. And the, the hand, watch my hand. It's twisting. Twisting. Remember, he's got hold of my arm. He's got hold of my arm. You're twisting it in. Look what happens with my look what happens with my grip. I've got a good grip on him here. Now this is not a very good grip. Now suppose the guy's got my arm, and I pull it in, and then pop. I just hit his hand. Pop. You hit it with the bone with the bone of the wrist. Now, in the form, we don't do it so explicitly. It's much more gentle. But that's what you're doing. We don't even do this. We just get ready to do it. So there's different reasons um, why we don't really do it. A lot, of, a lot of Tai Chi, particularly the more advanced stuff, you, when you practice the forms, you set it up, but you don't execute it. And the reason is, you don't... Uh, in, in China, there's so many people. You Rarely do you find a place where you can practice on your own. Mm. Martial artists tend to, maybe from all kinds of different uh, martial arts, 
kind of go to the, to the park in the big cities and that's where they practice. And you, you don't want to give your secrets away. You don't want them to, to understand that's what that is. All right. So, boom, you just do that and then you go on. But what the practice is, is to set it up so that you could do it if you wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. The actual execution is maybe not that important, but the setup is right. Um, have you ever have you ever painted your own house on the inside, inside or outside? Have you ever painted your house? Mm -hmm. Anybody who's done any real painting knows that ninety percent of the job is preparation. Yeah. The actual painting isn't that bad. It's yeah. getting everything ready. All right. This is the same thing. So you're practicing. You're practicing the the ninety percent. 10, it's only 10% to actually execute it, right? But you just practice and then you go on. All right, let's do the whole move. Chinna. Reverse chinna. Throw. Hit. Pull in. Um, watch my feet. Just watch this time. Right. So you can do that in one jump, but I don't anymore. All right, so just but but you need to adjust that foot first. All right? Everything is set. You need to adjust the left foot and then step out with the left foot. All right. All right, let's let's do it together three or four times and then I'll do it with my back to you three or four times. I've got black on, so you can't see. It's not even close. All right. Hold it. There's like a ball. Yeah. Slap, slap. Okay, let me do it with my back to you. Okay.
that's that's the next move. We'll we'll do that next weekend. All right, let's let's do this um, from um, White Crane. <laughs> All right, let me see you do it from White Crane. This way? Yes. Yes. remember watch watch twist Maya. That's okay. i have to practice every day this week every day. <laughs> that's okay just watch the uh watch the recording and uh work on it um i'm smiling and laughing because i can remember exactly what it felt like because I was in the, I was in your shoes and I, I was trying to learn this and it's like well, well, you just stand there for, a lot of like frozen. Lot. Yeah. yeah well eventually eventually you will become a a, a, a virtuoso more no, not, not doing this life but <laughs> eventually you become a virtuoso okay hon I got to take a little break here before the next class. So thank you. Good job. You will, you will post the the video tomorrow. Uh, yes. Okay. In the morning. Okay. Great. Okay. Ciao.